Good evening, everyone. My name is Chantal Morin. I'm from White River, Ontario. I'm a mom of four children, a grandma of six beautiful grandchildren. And I'm going to continue to read The Renewing of Your Mind. And this is scriptures that every one of us should know and that we should abide in, we should live in, we should study, we should believe, stand on it. And this take this as a lifestyle because our life in Christ is an everyday thing. It's a lifestyle. To be a child of God, it's a lifestyle. It's not only for a period of time. It's not only for um, when you want to and how you feel. But it, it's it's an everyday thing. So we just have to get used to it. That living for Jesus, it's a lifestyle. And we need to be an example, and we need to be uh, the people we say that we are, to be there for others, to love others, to support them, and uh, to help them in every way that we can, and to forgive one another, and uh, to not hate each other, because hate people, it's not from the Lord, so if you say that you love your brother, or you love Jesus and you hate your brother, well, you're a liar. That's what the Word says. So we need to really stand on His Word and do what the Lord says we'll do. Excuse me for a minute. I just need to close this heat here. It's too hot. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm going to start with Roman 12.2. And before I start, I just want to open with a word of prayer. And then we'll go on from there. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you tonight, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you have given me. Thank you, God, for my children. Thank you for the visit that I had with my son today, God. I just, I am a, it's so blessed. It, it's a blessing to have our children. Uh, to be able to come and visit us and to take time together, Lord, as a family. Lord, we just thank you, God, for uh, the love that you pour through them, to their mother. Lord, we ask you tonight to open up, Lord, the heart of your people. Open up their mind and their soul before you. Allow them, Lord Jesus, to receive everything that you have for them tonight. Speak to their heart, Lord. And I pray, Father God, that you will touch them in a powerful way, in a special way, in a way that you have never touched them before. And let your word speak to their heart. Allow the word of God to be a lamp onto their feet. That they may receive and believe and stand on the word of God and to take it in and to use it as a lifestyle. And they may live according to your word. So we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, that uses this vessel to speak through me and to touch through me, to heal through me, to love through me, and to do the deliverance and the miracle that you need to do through me as well. So, Lord, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the power that is within me. That I can go forward freely and to be able to be myself, to share the Word of God, to bless others, and to renew their mind and to transform their heart. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And ask, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise your holy name. We praise you tonight. We praise you, Lord. We glorify, we glorify your holy name tonight as we share the word of God. Thank you, Father. Mm. Oh, God is so good. His presence is so, so good. Thank you, Lord, for your peace. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Hallelujah. 
So Roman 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Philippians 4, 3 says, Finally, brother, it's true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, and whatever, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. So, you know, when you go through a hard time, your day is not going the way you want it to. You're going through this battle or you're going through this struggle or trials. Things do not stop attacking you each day. It's always coming after you. You know what you have to do is to come into the presence of God and to talk to Him. Pray. Pray and think on the good things of the Lord. Read the Word and think on the good things that the Lord has already prepared for you in heaven. You know, one day the Lord will come and get His people and He has rewards for you. And there's books that will be open there. Things will be written in these books. And make sure that your name is written in the book of life. And to have your name be written in the book of life, you have to believe onto Jesus and you need to receive him in your heart. And you need to give your whole life completely surrender all to Jesus. And come as you are. He will accept you the way you are. You know, God loves everyone. He loves everybody. And he wants you to come to him today. If you do not know him, give your life to Jesus today. Before it's too late. So we thank the Lord for his word. We thank the Lord for his promises. We thank the Lord for his coming. We thank the Lord for the new Jerusalem. We thank the Lord for his kingdom come. That one day we will all be together and rejoicing in the Lord. And living in this kingdom come. Paradise on earth. The new heaven and the new earth that he will make for us. For his children. Only his children will live there. No other one will come. But today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you repent. Today is the day that you give your heart to Jesus. Don't think that you can't. You can. Just because... The enemy is putting all kinds of things in your mind saying that you can't because you did this or you did that. Well, he's a liar. I've got something good to share with you and is the good news of Jesus Christ, the gospel. And the gospel of God is very powerful. You only need to receive it. You only need to believe it, accept it, take it in. Walk according to the word of God. God is good. He's really good. So let us give our heart to him today. For those that never did yet. You will see how he will renew your mind. And you will see how his word will transform you to be just like the word says it is. And you know the word is Jesus. And that's why the word says that we should be like Jesus. Because the word 
is Jesus. And if the word transforms you, it will transform you just like Jesus. You will be like him. You will love like him. You will act like him. You will talk like him. You will be his eyes. You will be his mouth. You will be his ears. You will be his hand. You will be his feet. Like it's going to be something when you surrender it all to him because he comes in and he takes over you. It is not you anymore that lives, but Jesus that lives within you. Allow him to come in and to sit in your heart. And you know your heart is the residence where God wants to come and live in. So invite him to come into the heart of his residence. Because he really wants to come in there and he wants to come and live. Abide in you. Live in you. Work through you. Speak through you. Do miracle through you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to pour out his power. His love is anointing on you. So that when you are equipped. And you have what God wants you to have. After he will use you. He will use you. God uses anyone that he wants to use. He will use the worst person ever. Believe it or not. If you only repent. And give your heart to Jesus today. He will use you. And he will use you in a powerful way. And do you know. I notice. God will use. That person that went through hell and back. That person that was hurt the most. He will use that person went through the valleys. That person was persecuted or that person was hated. That person was abused. God will use the worst of the worst. But he will bring out to the light. And he will make something very beautiful with it. And everything you have been through, God will use you to help somebody else that's going through the same thing you went through at that time. And you will be able to say, you know what, I've been through this. I could help you. I know all about that. I, I have a lot of experience because I lived that way all my 10 years or 15 years. And God will use you. He will use your baggage he will use your pain, your hurt, your heaviness to make someone beautiful. And who do we look at right now is the beauty of the heart. We do not look at the appearance of people. We do not look how people look, how small, big, medium they are, or how deformed they are. We don't look at that. What we look is at the heart. God wants your heart. And one day God's going to judge us by the heart. How? How are you thinking? How are you living? All to do with your heart. Did you pray with your heart? Did you give with your heart? Did you share with your heart? Did you help with your heart? Or you were just there for the fun of it? Or to get rid of some people in your life and say, Oh, I'll do it. I'll get rid of her. I'll do it right away fast and, you know. We have to think about the heart. We do it with love, with kindness, and with gentleness. And with patience. 
We need to relax and we need to breathe because sometimes some of us cannot relax and breathe. We get mad at everything we hear. We get upset at any word that you hear from someone. People need to relax, breathe, listen before we speak. Many of us speak too fast. We re react too fast. I know all about that. I've been there. React too fast. We answer too fast. We think we know before the person is finished to share what this person has to say that you already got the answer for this person. You know, it's already coming up to your mind. Okay, okay, no. Sometimes we think too fast. We need to relax. We need to take our time. This world is a very fast pace. Everything is done quick and too fast. You could see this right now all around you. But for those who are living in this kind of pace, to rush and to go too fast, stress will catch up to you and all kinds of other things will catch up to you. And that's when sickness and disease will catch up to you. But if you know how to react to things, you will have a better life. We need to take our time and to relax into this world. We need to go and live where there's peace. Sometimes, you know, we live with people. It's not always in peace. Sometimes it's toxic. And sometimes we need to get rid of all the toxic out of your life to have peace. Sometimes it could be people close to you, your best friend. It doesn't matter who they are. It could be your family member. If you know this person don't want to change. She doesn't want to listen to nothing. That's all she brings about every day is negative, nagging, nagging, every day negative. She can't forgive herself or she can't forgive others. You don't have to put up with that. You could always say, I'm sorry, but I don't need to listen to this. Because it comes into your mind. The more you listen to it, the more it will disturb you the more you will become what is this person is telling you about. That's why we've got to watch who we hang out with. What are we watching? What are we listening to? You will become what are you listening to? And who you're taking time with. So we have to make decision in life sometimes. Choice. And say, you know what? Enough is enough. I want peace in my life. I want to be loved. And I want to be accepted. Sometimes you need to move away with the right people. That's going to make you happy. With the right people that will love you and accept you. And I know it's not easy to find. But sometimes that's what we need to do with our life. To have peace. So we're going to continue. In the scriptures. Romans 12. 1 to 2. I appeal to you. There's for brother. By the mercy of God. To present your bodies. As a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed 
to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. And 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. Ephesians 4.23 And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Philippians 4.6-7 Do not be anxious about anything but in anything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in christ colossians 3 2 says set your mind on the things that are above, not on things that are on earth, because the thing of earth will pass away, and the thing above will last for eternity. Think on the good things above, what's coming your way for everlasting life. Psalm 119.11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. 2 Corinthians 10 4 5 says, For the weapon of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy stronghold. We destroy argument and every lofty opinion raise against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. And it's true what the scripture says, because we do not fight against flesh and blood, but we do fight against the oaths, the principalities, the darkness of this world. And the power of evil is real. It comes and attack you and it comes and makes you so tormenting that if you don't know how to pray or how to fight this in the spiritual realm, you will get sick. You can get sick. It is very serious to serve God. It is very serious who we are in Christ. We need to know how to fight, and that is on our knees, and to pray, and to talk to God. And if you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, and to speak into tongue, it will help you as well. Speaking to tongue, it is a language that God has given us. No man can understand, but if he asks for understanding, God will give him the understanding. But it is a language that you speak directly to the Father, and only the Father could know and understand. There are times I speak in tongue and I know what I'm saying. I could hear it in my own language. I know what I'm speaking. I know what I'm saying. You know, God is good. If you are a real child of God, God will teach you his ways and he will give you that spirit of understanding. And at times when you go through spiritual warfare, you really need to pray. You need to fast and you need to pray. Fasting really helps you 
Get rid of all the toxic out of your body and get rid of everything out of the way. It makes your mind very clear so that you could hear the voice of the Lord. So praying and reading the word and standing the word and praying the word on you when you're getting attacked by the enemy, it helps. The demons chambles at the name of Jesus. So if you pray and read the word, these demons will leave you alone. Which way that you are being attacked. And a lot of time you get attacked around your own churches. It's right in the church. But we're not even going to go there because that's, that's another story. We'll talk about that another night. But let's talk about when we get attacked by the enemy that, you know, there's three heavens that I've, I've learned. You know, it's like heaven on earth and there's the middle one and there's the heaven where Jesus is. And the middle one is where the enemy stops and fight our prayer from going up. From going up to heaven. To our Lord. But when you pray in the name of Jesus. Jesus works on your behalf. He's the one that intercedes for you. And he prays and goes to the Father on your behalf. And that's why we need to ask in his name there is no other name to pray to or ask only in the name of Jesus it is done he hears you he answers you and what you pray believe what you have asked do not doubt if you doubt your prayer will not be answered so we need to believe, just believe that what you pray and ask, it is done. It is already done. Your mind needs to be renewed. You need to believe what you ask. And when you do pray, like I said, you release your prayer into the spiritual realm and the enemy is there with his demon he will try to stop all these prayer from going through but you need to pray and intercede until you see a breakthrough you pray until you see a breakthrough and never ever give up on what you believe never give up on what you want because if you give up, you will never see the end of your miracle. You will never see or accomplish or come to pass what you really wanted to happen. No matter how hard it is, no matter what you're going through, never give up on no one. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on no one. Make sure that you continue to pray, you continue to read the Word of God, and you continue to praise and worship the Lord. And you will see your breakthrough. Sooner or later, this breakthrough will come. But always ask in the name of Jesus and it shall be done got to know how to pray you got to know how to approach.